Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 released back in 2004 on PC and was a construction and management simulation game based around theme parks with a big emphasis on the main attraction of any park, the roller coasters. This complete edition, including two expansion packs from back in the day, is just about to release on the Nintendo Switch. Will it have you screaming as you want to go faster or regretting that extra portion of fries as you loop the loop and corkscrew your way all about the place? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishers for the review code and now let's find out. As you would expect, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 has you in charge of a number of theme or amusement parks throughout your playthrough and there are two game modes, Career and Sandbox, as well as two extra expansion modes that are included in this complete edition as I mentioned just now. Starting with the Career mode, there are 18 different scenarios to try and complete, with 6 being unlocked from the start and the others unlocking through game progression. Each scenario gives you three sets of objectives to complete, Apprentice, Entrepreneur and Tycoon. Completing the Apprentice objectives will unlock the Entrepreneur and so on. They relate to things such as attracting a certain number of people to the park or having to keep the amount of litter down to a minimum and each tier of objectives sees the numbers rise and become more difficult as you would expect. The parks will have their own theme and you will be in charge of every little detail. The basic layout of the park is set with a number of rides already in place, but otherwise you will be looking to add further rides, shops and facilities to improve the quality and standing of the park and impress the visitors or peeps as they are known. The level of control you have over proceedings is fantastic. You can look at the stock each individual shop has, setting prices for every item, even choosing whether the ice creams have flakes in. I mean, you've got to have a flake in your ice cream, surely. But you can also look at other aspects, such as how full a ride should be before starting and how often your maintenance crew will monitor each ride. That's before even touching on the control you have over the park aesthetic, not just in terms of creating scenic displays or choosing the theme of certain elements, but also in being able to select the colours of certain parts of each ride. You will need to hire a variety of staff members for a number of roles, again looking at their salaries and their motivation. You can train your staff to make them more efficient, discipline them should you feel the need arises, and change their movement path to ensure maximum efficiency from your workforce. Then of course you have the roller coaster building itself. This gives you a whole wealth of options in terms of track parts and you can use these to build some fantastic creations. But it isn't just as simple as creating a complete loop as the coaster has to abide by the laws of physics. You will need to add a variety of safety measures and engineering techniques to ensure things run smoothly such as lift chains, banked slopes and breakpoints. The game does explain all of this to you but it can be very overwhelming and if you're anything like me your first few attempts just won't work. In the end I had to start small and learn the basics before jumping to anything more extravagant. There is a useful autocomplete option if you've got yourself into a bit of a hole and are finding it difficult to navigate the laying of the track or you can just use the preset tracks if you are finding it all a bit too frustrating. It is quite staggering what can be achieved with some practice and a creative mind, neither of which I have much of, and it's not just roller coasters of course, other track based rides such as water tubes, steam trains and even crazy golf courses can be created. We'll talk briefly about sandbox mode which basically gives you a set plot of land, removes any objectives, hands you access to every asset available in the game from the off and does away with silly little things like having to pay for any of it. You can build the park of your dreams without the worry of money and the only restriction you have is the size of the plot of land as this cannot be expanded in sandbox mode as it can in career mode. As I alluded to at the start, this being the complete package also contains the two expansion packs released back in the day called Soaked and Wild. Soaked brings an extra 9 scenarios all based around water parks, whereas Wild adds another 12, this time based around safari parks. That's 39 scenarios across the whole package for your money. Control wise you move around your park with the left stick, change the direction the camera is facing with the right stick and zoom in and out by pressing ZL and ZR respectively. It works okay although it can be quite awkward at times. The main reason for this is that when you move the right stick to look around your park the camera doesn't lock and instead it creeps slowly towards the direction that you are turning. This will end up with you occasionally getting caught in scenery especially if there is something large behind you like a mountain. Had the camera locked in place when moving the right stick you would have had much more control and could have then just used the left stick to refine movement. You'll manage and it will become second nature but it didn't need to be as cumbersome as it is. The developers have opted for a radial wheel scheme for this console version. 
In fact, there are two wheels. The one you will see on the left hand side of the screen is where you will find most of what you need for building rides and amenities within your park. To use it, you hold down the L button and then use the left stick to navigate to the category you want. As mentioned, building all takes place here, so you could pick rides, shops, facilities or paths and clicking it will then bring up a number of submenus relating to that category, such as splitting rides into gentle or thrill rides and you can then use the D-pad to choose the specific rides you want from here. Your park management options, including the hiring of staff, are also found on this left wheel. The other wheel, which is displayed on the right hand side, will pop up when you click onto a building or a ride. This time holding down the R button will allow you to navigate the options and these will all relate to that particular building, allowing you to view customer satisfaction, change the prices being charged or open and close the particular ride or shop. Something that did take a bit of getting used to was rotating buildings before placing them. To do this you must hold down the Y button once the building turns green to indicate it can be placed and then move the left stick left or right until you are happy with the direction the building is facing. Simple enough in theory but due to the fact you can elevate buildings or put them further underground done by flicking up and down on the stick I frequently found myself doing this instead by mistake. It's a bit fiddly and it would have just been much better to assign 90 degree turns to the shoulder buttons for this action. There's so much more I could have mentioned, such as Mix Masters, which allows you to choreograph animal routines or firework displays for example, or looking at the difference in demographics between night visitors and day visitors and ensuring you cater to both. There are so many options. I never played Roller Coaster Tycoon back in the day, although I played a ridiculous amount of theme park, as I always thought that perhaps the flashier elements of building the roller coasters would dilute the management side of things. I'm delighted to see just how wrong I've been over these years as the number of management options and the depth of gameplay is astonishing. Plus of course you get to build the flashy roller coasters at the same time. Gameplay gets 19 out of 20. Controls use a sensible radial wheel option and it does work well and makes the more intricate actions more manageable but the camera and placing of certain items is a bit awkward and they score 14 out of 20. Visually, I think I'm right in saying that Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 was the first in the series to step into 3D and leave the isometric view behind. This is evident in the 3D character models of the peeps as you zoom into the park, as from close up they definitely look like they are from the early 2000s. This isn't really a negative though, in fact it rather adds to the charm. They almost look like Muppet characters these days with their large rounded noses and elongated mouths, and I really enjoyed swooping in every so often just to watch them go about their day. The parks and assets all look vibrant with enough to differentiate each one from the other and a nice variety of themes to go with it. Things run well and I haven't had any issues of slowdown. The scaling of some features, particularly the people, can be quite abrupt when zooming as they will just disappear at a moment's notice, but it keeps everything running smoothly, which is fine by me. Things are also slightly blurrier in handheld mode, most notable when zoomed in, but again, it's not a huge problem. You also have the coaster cam in this game of course, which effectively allows you to be on the rides themselves, and this is a great feature. Plus there is a day and night cycle, and the nights can look really effective when everything is lit up. In terms of the audio, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is a bit of a mixed bag. Not necessarily in terms of the quality of the music, but in how it's executed. Zooming right into the park will fill the air with the noise of the crowd, and create an atmosphere of all the fun and excitement you would expect. By default, zooming out of this close-up mode will mean complete silence, but you can change this in the options menu and select any one of the game's tunes to play during this time, but it will only play when you zoom out to the maximum distance, and any distance short of this will maintain the silence. This means that unless you are completely zoomed in or completely zoomed out, there is no music. It's a very odd choice, and the game loses a bit of the atmosphere and charm because of it, and it's even more aggravating because the music itself is actually pretty good, with a lot of different options and styles. Although they do look their age, visuals have the charm and vibrancy essential for a game like this to shine, plus performance is strong too, and they score 16 out of 20. Audio is good, but isn't utilised well enough in my opinion, and scores 14 out of 20. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition costs £19.99, £29 or €29.99 Euros 99, or €45 Australian dollars, and it will take up 2.7GB of your system storage. As far as I'm concerned, this is pricing almost done to perfection. Yes, the game is 16 years old, but the gameplay holds up just as well today, it's insanely replayable, has some quality of life tweaks, although maybe could have had a couple more, and includes all of the expansion packs from back then. 
The only thing holding it back from a perfect 20 here is the exchange rates between regions is pretty wonky, especially for those in Europe, although from a selfish point of view it's actually nice that the UK benefits from this for once, but value gets 19 out of 20. To conclude, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition is another fantastic addition to the Switch's growing library of construction and management simulation games. Its gameplay is as fun and compelling as it's ever been, and sensible choices have been made to the control scheme to make it easy to play on a console. They could have perhaps done more to improve the camera or the general laying of some of the assets, and the way the music is used means it never reaches its full potential, but these are minor negatives for what is otherwise an enjoyable and very reasonably priced experience. Between this, Two Point Hospital, Railway Tycoon and City Skylines, the Switch is becoming the place to be for management simulations. Imagine being told 25 years ago that you'd be able to play full fat versions of these sorts of games on a handheld console. Amazing stuff. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition gets a Switch Up score of 82%. Thank you everybody for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.